ECMO is when a person's lungs are not working or their heart is not working, we're able to take blood from their body, oxygenate it outside of their body and put it back in. And this is our oxygenator, so the blood flows. And so we're functioning as a lung or a heart, depending on what type of ECMO it is, to help the person get oxygen to where they need to get to. So there's the ECMO that we do when the heart's working and the ECMO that we do when the heart's not working. One is called VV and one is called VA ECMO. Venus is good, going on. VV ECMO is when the heart is working and the heart can be our pump. So we extract from the veins and put back into the veins and then the heart takes this rich oxygenated blood and pumps it out to the rest of the body. So that's called Veno Veno ECMO where we can use just the veins. When VA ECMO is veno arterial ECMO where the heart is not working and we take blood from the veins, oxygenate it, remove CO2 and then pump it back into the arterial side so that the heart is bypassed and doesn't have to do any work. When you look at a patient who's on ECMO, um, what you see are two very large cannulas. One usually is very bright red and one is less bright red. One is a venous cannula and one is the arterial cannula with the oxygenated blood which looks nice and bright. Usually in the neck and the other one is, is in the groin coming um, o over the leg. And sometimes these patients need dialysis as well. So in addition to the ECMO machine, the ventilator, there's also a dialysis machine in the room. Um, so we're really monitoring and, and dealing with many different organs at the same time. So the people that we consider for ECMO or who might need ECMO are people who um, have some sort of um, recoverable lung disease. So they have a pneumonia that's going to get better. Um, they have uh, heart failure that there is a plan to make that better. Either they're gonna have some intervention done or they're waiting for a transplant. That's another population of patients that need ECMO or can use ECMO. They're really at death's door when we put them on, on, on ECMO. So there's no question in my mind that this saves lives. We've had patients wide awake, off the ventilator, uh, with the ECMO cannulas in, and we're doing rehab. Um, we're walking them down the hall with the ECMO cannulas, getting them stronger. Sometimes they can come off the ventilator and still just be on ECMO, and sometimes we take off the ECMO and we leave the ventilator. It really depends on the patient. So as much as we possibly can be getting them awake, we are, and we're doing physical therapy with them from the very beginning. So trying to really get them moving. So patients can be on ECMO indefinitely. We've had patients who are waiting for transplants on ECMO for three, four, five months at, at a time. It's not ideal. We really try to keep people on for the shortest amount of time possible, but if we need to, we can go longer. Putting someone on ECMO is not a cure. It buys you time. It's very invasive. We're putting very large catheters into a patient, so there's complications that can happen for that. We need to put patients who are on ECMO on blood thinners, so they have to be able to tolerate blood thinners and not have bleeding issues because those people we can't put on ECMO either. People have clots, and those clots can travel. They can travel to your lungs, they can travel to your brain. Uh, we always consider patients, regardless of age, but we know that as patients get to be above 65 or above 70, that their ability to tolerate those big shifts of blood is, is decreased. Um, all those things need to be taken into consideration as to is this really gonna help the patient or are we putting them at undue risk without benefit? So coming off ECMO can be tricky. Uh, what we try to do is come down on the amount of support that we're giving. So the amount of CO2 that we're removing, we bring down. The amount of oxygen that we're giving um, through our oxygenator, we bring down to really let the lungs do all of the work. When we know the patient can survive without our machine, that's when we try to take out the ECMO cannulas. Yeah, so the recovery post-ECMO can be a lot. Um, the patients have to learn to walk again. There's a lot of physical therapy involved. There's speech therapy involved. A lot of them were on ventilators for a long period of time. There's social work issues of where they go, what rehab do they go to, what rehab do they need afterwards. So it's a very involved team that comes together to both take care of the patients while they're in the hospital and also plan for where they go after the hospital.
It's so gratifying when the person comes off ECMO and you know we all are rooting for these patients and, and, and are part of their care family.